come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> say about that? Oh, I didn't bust it, honest. <laughs> He's telling the truth, Mr. Drysdale. It was hanging in pieces like that when we moved in. Yes, sir. No, it's supposed to be like that. It was made that way. It's been like that for 200 years. 200 years? Gee, this house is older than it looks. <laughs> oh, I plum forgot. Granny wants to see you. Let's get out. Pull right up, Jed. Nice boy. His, his ma, my cousin Pearl, give me the notion to move out here. Well, I'm most grateful to her. Oh, but first, I wanted to explain about this priceless crystal chandelier. It was designed and made for Louis XV, hung in the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. Napoleon Bonaparte planned campaigns for the light of that chandelier. Talleyrand used it. Wellington, Disraeli, Bismarck, Wilson. Mr. Drysdale, we're just plain folk. We don't mind a few things being secondhand. <laughs> Getting back to my cousin Pearl, she's looking after the old home place for me. You ain't never seen my family home, have you? No, I haven't, Mr. Clevin. It's a dandy. Yes, those southern mansions are beautiful. I suppose it has the large white pillars. It did, but we bring them along and put them on the beds out here. <laughs> no, you see, I was referring to wooden pillars. Oh, I ain't never slept on one of them. We had everything first class back home. <laughs> sure hope Pearl's taking good care of that place. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-five million, to be exact. You, you, you ain't here to back out, are you? No, no, indeed. Your, your cousin's money is safe in the bank in California. <sighs> I just thought you'd like to know that I heard from the bank, and your family arrived in Beverly Hills safe and sound. Oh, that is good news. My son Jethro drove him out, you know. Yes, I know he did. <laughs> oh, I have something here from the bank. I, I, think, you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. For me? They told me it's your house I'd find you here. Yeah, well, I promised Cousin Jed I'd keep an eye on the old home place for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long trip from my house, but uh, I, I, I'm glad to do it for Jed. That's nice of you. Yeah, well, you know, uh, can, can, can I help you look for that money? <laughs> what is the money? It's, uh, it's pictures of the estate that Mr. Drysdale, the president of the bank, purchased for him in Beverly Hills. Oh. Now, this is now the Jed Clampett estate. Land to mercy, look at that. Why, it's bigger than the state capitol. <laughs> Quite a change from this place, all right. <laughs> what in the world is that? Oh, uh, that's a swimming pool. Swimming pool? Yeah, it's quite ornate. Oh, my son Jethro's gonna like that. <laughs> He's done washing. Can I go swimming here in the cement pond? Of course not. I don't allow nobody splash around in my wash water. <laughs> ain't there no place else you can wash? This cement pond's the only water we got. The place ain't got a well, it ain't got a creek. It ain't even got a rain barrel to catch what comes out of the sky. Oh, when that banker fella seen me unloading your wash tub and scrubbing board, he said, why, you can throw that away. We don't use them things here in Beverly Hills. Now, you listen here to me, boy. 
I don't care how other folks live in Beverly Hills, but us Clampets is gonna be clean. Yes, ma'am. May not have it as nice as we have it back home in the cabin. Just right in the house and everything. But we ain't gonna lower our standards. No, ma'am. Here, wrench these things out for me. We gotta get this tub back to the kitchen. Really fast. Yep. Being clean is a strict rule with your Uncle Jeff. Let me look you over. <laughs> Many the time we've been down to our last piece of fat. I'd say, shall I cook it to eat it, or shall I render it down for soap? <laughs> He'd say, no, render it down for soap, Granny. The Lord will feed us poor folks, but we got to do our own washing. <laughs> But Uncle Jed ain't poor now, Granny. He got $25 million. How long do you think that's gonna last if we go throwing it away on store-bought soap? <laughs> Waste not, want not. <laughs> now, here's a, here's a view of the entrance hall. My stars and garters. Why, it's a palace. <laughs> Who ever would have thought that my cousin Jed would be living in an estate like this? Well, the credit is yours. You're the one who talked him into moving. Oh, well, I put the notion in his head. But it was really kind of Allie Mae when. Yes, his daughter will have a wonderful life as a Beverly Hills debutante. Can't you just see that beautiful girl descending this magnificent stairway? I sure can. Oh, Allie Mae, I don't reckon that's the way a young lady comes down the steps in Beverly Hills, is it, Mr. Drydale? Oh, not as a rule, no. Oh, I can come down no other way. Watch this. How's <laughs> that? Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Well, show me. No, my secretary will show you. Oh, she's in town doing some shopping for you. Oh, what's she getting me? Well, now, that's going to be a surprise, Ellie, but it's some things you've been a-needing, and they're going to be pretty, and you're going to like them. Things I've been a-needing? Mm -hmm. A set of muskrat traps. <laughs> a three-blade frog sticker? Nope. <laughs> a ready-made slingshot. Now, oh, Ellie, you way off the track. Now, you wait till Miss Hathaway gets here, and you'll see. Yes. Well, I'll be pushing along to the bank. Now, don't you worry about your daughter, Mr. Clampett. When my secretary gets through with her, you'll think she's been to finishing school. I sure wish my cousin Pearl was out here, fixing Ellie up. She's a wizard, fancy sewing. Oh, is she a dressmaker? That woman can make anything. Why, she can pick up a handful of straw, and before you know it, she's made a hat. That's remarkable. So she's a milliner. Oh, she's a Clampett. <laughs> Married to Bodine, I don't recall knowing the milliner. Milliners are women who make hats. That's Pearl, all right, but she's a clampet. You talk about making hats. Pearl made herself a hat one time, a shape just like a bird's nest. And in there on the nest uh, was this blue jay a setting on her eggs. Well, sir, they come from everywhere to see that hat, to study it, to see how Pearl made it so they could copy it. Boy, there was dozens of them from all around. Hat designers. No, Blue Jay. <laughs> Never did catch on too good with people. But for a while there, Pearl couldn't hardly go out of the house without a bunch of Blue Jays taken out after her. <laughs> sure wish she was out here. She'd have Ellie slick as a picture in a catalog. Yep. I ought to be out there in Beverly Hills helping Cousin Jed. Well, he certainly has plenty of room for you. This mansion of his has 32 rooms and 14 baths. 14 bathrooms? Yes. A sunken marble bathtub. Oh, I can just see Ellie Mae having herself a bubble bath in there. <laughs> I tell you, Mr. Brewster, the more I see of these pictures, the more I want to get out there and help Cousin Jen. Of course, I wouldn't go without being asked. Well, naturally. But, uh, you know, I, I think you should go. I've been asked. Well, now, it's not exactly my province. I, I mean, I, uh, 
Well, why don't you telephone your cousin and talk to him? Oh, why, they ain't a telephone within 40 miles of this place. Nearest one, I guess, is uh, at the International Emporium, clean over to Oxford. Well, I'd be happy to drive you over there. Oh, I couldn't let you drive me all that way just to use telephone. Busy oil company man like you. <laughs> That's 40 miles. There's no trip at all in this car. No, I couldn't do it. Why, folks would see me riding in this big, shiny car with a tall, good-looking city fella. <laughs> Why, sure as the world, they'd think that... Let's go. Well, uh, what about your horse and buggy? Oh, just untie Bessie. She'll go on home. <laughs> Well, uh, Bessie's headed for home, all right. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, how long has your buggy been hitched there? About an hour. Why? Why, uh, Blue Jay built her nest on the seat, and she was sitting on her eggs. Oh, shoot. I wanted to wear that. <laughs> Fine. Ready for Ellie May? Gentlemen, aided and abetted by the gossamer garments, exotic lotions, and other feminine appurtenances within these curtains, I am ready to assume the role of Pygmalion and transform that barefoot galatea into a striking and sophisticated paragon of Beverly Hills' Le Couture. That's yes, the hard way. <laughs> well, duty calls. I leave you in capable hands. Goodbye, Mr. Clavitt. Thank you, sir. Chief. Well, that sure is neighborly of you, Miss Hathaway. You reckon you can handle it, me? Uncle Jed, Granny says... Oh, howdy, Miss Hathaway. No, oh, bonjour, Jethro. Here are them things in for Miss Hathaway, Jethro. I think she kind of likes you, boy. She does? Well, I can't take them into the house. That's what I come out here to tell you. Granny says that all the men folks got to stay out of the house while Ella May's taking her bath. Oh. But isn't Ellie May bathing in the privacy of her own bedroom suite? Hear what she call you? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with him? Why doesn't he answer? Hey, he's just a little shy, I reckon. Ask him again. Is Ellie May in her bedroom suite? No, she ain't, darling. <laughs> I'll find her myself. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I got me a girl! You sure have, boy, and a city girl, too. <laughs> Yahoo! Oh, some city girls I were about. Jess was such a good-looking boy. Every girl in the fifth grade was after him. I hardly think anything serious can develop between boys and girls in the fifth grade. Oh, I don't know. So far this year, there's been three couples out of Jethro's class get married. Married? Fifth grader. Parsons nearly as busy in that school as the teacher. That's amazing. Oh, I've heard of Uh-oh, uh, wouldn't you know it? There's that Snoopy Alberta Bradshaw and her big mouth daughter sitting on my front porch. Oh, I can just hear the stories they'll start going around if they see me in this car here with you. Yoo-hoo, Alberta! <laughs> it's me, Pearl! <laughs> Terrible gossip, that woman always making trouble. <laughs> she tried to talk Griney out of going to California. <laughs> she ought to see Griney now. Living like a queen in that Beverly Hills mansion. <laughs> Listened to L. Hunter Bradshaw and stayed home. And had a pump right in the house. Didn't have to choke water a quarter of a mile. Are you ready to get rinsed off, Ellie? Well, not yet, Granny. Should have washed my hair. No. You better wait till I can catch some rainwater. That pond water smells like it's got medicine in it. I wondered why there's no fish in that pond. Yeah. I reckon that water killed them fish. Don't you worry. 
My wife Soap will kill anything that kills them fish. <laughs> Have you seen... What in the world's going on here? Well, there's a bath going on. That's what's going on. Howdy. <laughs> but I don't understand. Well, then somebody ought to explain it to you, sissy woman. You see, first you heat some water. Then you put it in a great big tub like this. You put some soap in it, and then you get in it, and you start to wash, and that's what you call a bath. Granny, <laughs> you don't have to do this sort of thing in Beverly Hills. Don't you listen to her, Ellie. <laughs> Ain't you ever heard that saying that cleanness is next to godliness? But of course, John Wesley said that. And I bet he didn't live in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Here, Ellie, dry yourself off with this nice big bath towel. Ah, my girl. I'll rinse off that old lye soap. Lye soap? Did you say lye soap? That's right. I make it myself. But that will ruin this beautiful girl's delicate skin. I've been washing with it for 72 years. Look at my skin. It's like leather. Yeah. Nice, ain't it? <laughs> Granny, I hope you will forgive my... Momentary bewilderment at this primitive form of ablution, but please let me explain. Well, uh, first explain what you just said. <laughs> well, Ellie Mae has a beautiful big bathtub upstairs. Upstairs? It was hard enough carrying the water in here. I ain't going to tote no water upstairs. But you don't have to. There's a big, beautiful... Haven't you been upstairs? No. Jed said that probably belonged to somebody else. <laughs> ain't that right, Ellie? Yeah. Paul said he heard tell that folks sometimes live one family right on top of another. But that's only in apartment houses. This entire house belongs to you. And each one has his own individual bedroom suite. Come along and let me show you. And also the lovely things I brought from town. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll be up directly. What all did you bring from town? Everything, Ellie. Everything from chapeau to pumps. <laughs> pumps! Praise the Lord! Now I won't have to tote water. <laughs> you through? Yeah, Uncle Jed? Now, if you're gonna be keeping company with a girl, is there any questions you like to ask me? What kind of questions? <laughs> oh, about girls. How much you know about girls? They softer than boys. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Speaking. And they shorter and rounder. Yeah. And the hair's longer and it smells sweet when you snuggles up to them. Oh, so you've been doing some snuggling, have you? I've done more than that. Yeah, well, I reckon you better tell me about it. Who was she? Prettiest girl in the hills. Big Mouth Bradshaw. My old Vernon's girl. I hear tell she's kind of fast. Is she ever? Uncle Jed, I was walking past the cabin, and Big Mouth, she calls out the window to me. She says, howdy, Jethro. She says, my ma's just made a big batch of cookies. Come on in and have some. And I says, sure your ma won't mind? And she says, ma's gone, and so's pa. I'm here all alone. Well, Uncle Jed, I was in that house before you could wink an eye. I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> No sooner was I inside, the big mouth, she puts a music record on the phonograph machine and commences to sashaying around, a twisting and a turning. Dancing. Yeah, I reckon so. Anyway, she says, put your arms around me, Jethro, and I'll teach you the two-step. What'd you say? I says, listen, big mouth, I says, here we are all alone. Your ma and your pa gone, and you think that I'm going to waste my time dancing? I say, it's not me, sister. Bring on them cookies. <laughs> What'd she say? Well... Jed, you and Jethro can start digging the well. That city woman brought us some pumps. That's fine, Granny. We'll get right to it. <laughs> What'd that Bradshaw girl say when you said, bring on them cookies? Well, she just held up them cookies like this here. Kind of blinked her eyes at me and said, Jethro, which do you think it tastes sweeter? These here cookies or my lips? <laughs> well, Uncle Jed, right then and there is when I found out she was fast. 
I grabbed them two cookies, and it took me two miles to outrun that gal. <laughs> Yes, Rule. On one of these days, you and me's got to have a long talk. <laughs> oh, yes. He's a lady killer, that bar of mine. While Verna Bradshaw's daughter traced him all the way home one day. Sounds like Jethro has a lot of charm and sex appeal. Oh, he has. It's um, funny how a daughter can take after her father and a, a boy can favor his mother. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I ought to be out there looking after Jethro. You know, Jed's going to need him to help garden a place this big. Well, most Beverly Hills mansions have regular gardeners. And, of course, a complete sprinkling system. Sprinkling system? Oh, yes, indeed. That entire lawn is crisscrossed with underground pipes. Learn to mercy. <laughs> Five hundred years old, there's water all over this property. Ain't too deep, neither. I know. Should I commence to digging? Well, now, let's get as close to the house as we can. That way, the pump won't have so far to pull. Robert! Jethro! Uh oh, here comes your sweetheart. It's Clampett. I cannot handle that daughter of yours. What happened? I opened that box of beautiful clothes, turned my back for a moment, and she bolted like a wild colt. I was afraid this would happen. Where is she? She's up there. I'll go right up and talk to her. Jethro, have, have you been upstairs yet? No, ma'am. Then you've got a surprise coming to you. What is it? Your sweet. So are you. No. Oh, howdy, Pop. Hey. I'm ashamed of you. Running off from Miss Hathaway. I didn't run away from Miss Hathaway. What'd you climb up here for? To cut a fork for that new store-bought slingshot she brought. Did she bring you a slingshot? Fanciest thing you ever did see. Just a minute, I'll hook it up and you can see for yourself. Look at that. <laughs> A store-bought, lace-trimmed, double-barrel slingshot. Ain't it a doozy? I don't know how good I can aim it, but it'll sure throw a heap of rocks. <laughs> out there. Why, I could work wonders for Ellie Mae with my fancy sewing and beauty secrets and hair styling and everything. Of course, I had to learn all those things, not having a husband to support me. Didn't you say it was 40 miles to the town of Oxford? Oh, that's right. Well, we've already driven 110 miles. Well, land to mercy, I forgot to tell you the turn off. <laughs> Well, as long as we come this far, uh, maybe we ought to go right on to California. <laughs> I tell you, Granny, there's so much water here, you could shoot a load of buckshot in that ground and bring up a dozen springs. I'll be right back. <laughs> I ain't never missed yet. 